general pathology discussions and since it was a request from one of the students that sir do please upload videos on wound healing so uh, here i am with the video and the today today's video will be mainly focusing about the important differences between the primary and the secondary healing so students um, before getting into the topic i would like to say that the healing process the wound healing process what is there that can be broadly subdivided into the primary healing and the secondary healing and when you go through the paragraph or the context the theoretical portion the, into the detailed description about the primary healing and the secondary healing it becomes quite uh, confusing or to segregate between the different important points of differentiation so today's video will be mainly focusing about the main distinguishing the differentiating features between the primary and the secondary healing and i have summarized all the important points of differentiation which are very important from both the perspectives that is from the competitive point of view and that if it is in the case of writing in the professional exams. So students, I have tried to summarize the important points of differentiation in this form of the differentiation from format and today I will be discussing about the primary and the secondary healing. So students, uh, I would like to give you a just uh, a brief gist about the process of healing so there are basically two mechanisms which operate whenever a wound is there so students when uh, the wound what is going to uh, it is going to heal either by one of the two processes that is the primary healing and the secondary healing so looking at the important differences as to what is actually the primary healing and what is the secondary healing so the first two stages that is the initial hemorrhage and the acute inflammatory reaction both are the same in both the cases that is in the primary and the secondary healing the acute inflammatory the initial hemorrhagic phase and the acute inflammatory phase both are more or less the same in both the healing but when talking of the uh, closure of the wound margins by in the case of primary and the secondary healing when it comes so the closure of the wound margins what is going to occur in cases of the in cases of both these cases there is a slight difference so students here i'll be emphasizing within these points so beginning with primary healing so students one thing very important what i would like to emphasize over here that primary healing it is that healing what is mostly occurring in the clean and uninfected wounds so students do remember the primary healing what is there which mostly occurs in a clean incised wound so in cases of whenever there is a clean or an uninfected wound the healing what is pre predominantly seen it is the primary healing whereas when talking of the secondary healing the secondary healing in this case the wound is open with large tissue defect is going to occur and at times it can there can be a possibility that an infection would also be present so secondary healing it mostly occurs in an open wound with large tissue defect as well as at times this wound this wound of the secondary healing what is going to heal it it might be infected moving on to the next point of differentiation so the primary healing what is there it is not there is not much loss of cells and tissues when talking of the primary healing there is as such not much loss of the cells and tissues whereas in cases of the secondary healing there is an extensive loss of cells and tissues so students I would like to emphasize over here that it the secondary healing phenomena it is basically occurring when there is an injury to a very extensive level and that injury which is at a very extensive level that is causing an extensive loss of cells and tissues moving on to the third point of differentiation that is in the case of primary healing the edges of the wound are approximated by surgical sutures so the primary healing is most frequently seen whenever there whenever the surgeon is going to put his um, blade into the particular uh, or into a particular area or a site and the 
surgical wounds the wounds what are inflicted whenever any surgery is being performed those wounds are predominantly primarily they are healed by the phenomena of primary healing so that is in that case the edges of the cut ends or the margins of the wound are approximated by surgical sutures so make this point very clear that in case of primary healing the edges of the wounds they are approximated by surgical sutures moving on when the on the contrast in case of the secondary healing the edges of the wounds they are not approximated by surgical sutures so this is the secondary healing actually what is going to occur whenever there is an extensive cell cellular or tissue injury when an extensive uh, accident or in cases of um, large defects what occurs in cases of secondary healing and here the phenomena the edges of the wounds they are not approximated by surgical sutures moving on to the next point of differentiation as i have already specified and clarified that the primary healing phenomena it is mostly induced by the surgeon which is by taking which is by the surgeon whenever he is going to operate a particular area or a site so the primary healing takes place in surgically incised wound whenever there is going to be a surgery the surgically incised wound that is particularly healing by the phenomena of primary healing moving on to the contrary on contrary to this point there is in case of secondary healing what we find that it is going to take place in infected and large wounds which are caused due to any form of injury so whenever in, in a road traffic accident when it, uh, the tissue is being crushed or lacerated in that particular condition the healing what is seen it is the primary healing and that takes place whenever there is going to be in an infected and large wounds which are caused due to an injury moving on to the next point of differentiation that in case of the primary healing the scar tissue actually when a heal it's a normal phenomena that whenever any kind of a wound healing occurs after the complete healing of the wound there is a there is and there is actually the formation of a scar tissue so scar tissue is is uh, it's in most of the cases it is found that the wound after the process of wound healing a scar is always formed so that scar what occurs in case of primary healing it is a neat and a small scar so whenever in cases of primary healing what we find that the scar what is formed that the scar what is remaining after the complete healing that is actually it is a very neat and a small scar is seen whereas in cases of secondary healing what we find that the scar what ultimately develops it is usually very ugly and the scar can be large moving on to the next point of differentiation so students in the cases of primary healing there is as such no granulation tissue formation this is the striking and the chief distinguishing feature what i would like to emphasize over here do remember in cases of primary healing there is as such no formation of any granulation tissue no granulation tissue is being formed whereas it, this granulation tissue forms the main bulk in cases of secondary healing so students make this point very very clear that in cases of secondary healing the granulation tissue it is forming the main bulk of healing students i would like to emphasize over here one point that in the in both the cases when looking at the wound margins what are there the margins of the wound what are the cut wounds are there and which is it is having both the margins so what is going to happen is that the basal cells of the epidermis in the cells in the skin there is the epidermis and the dermis so the basal cells of the epidermis are going to proliferate in the form of epithelial spurs and these epithelial spurs they are going to eventually migrate towards each other and ultimately there is going to occur the closure of the wounds in case of primary healing but students 
the in the cases of secondary healing what we find the these epithelial spurs what are formed by the proliferation of the epi basal cells of the epidermis they are not going to close the wound margin until and unless the granulation tissue what is being formed at, from the base of the wound margin is not going to fill up the wound so students make this point very clear that the epithelial and the uh, if the basal cells of the epithelial epithelium of the epidermis what are going to approximate each other and close the wound margin in cases of primary healing they are well sufficient enough well capable enough to close the wound which is going to occur by primary healing whereas in cases of secondary healing what the condition is there the epithelial spurs what are formed by the proliferation of the basal cells of the epidermis they are not going to close the entire wound and till and unless there is formation of the granulation tissue from the base of the wound and the granulation tissue until and unless it is going to fill up the wound gap from the base to the above these epithelial spurs they are unable to close the wound so students this was about the granulation tissue the fact of what i was emphasizing upon here it was the granulation tissue it is forming the main bulk of the healing in cases of secondary healing now moving on to the next point of differentiation that here that the healing takes place from the margins inwards so in cases of primary healing the healing what is going to occur it is actually from the margins and that too it is going to occur inwards whereas on contrary in cases of the secondary healing from base the healing what is going to occur it is going to occur from the base upwards besides in addition to from the margins inwards so students this in spite of from the margins to the inwards the process of healing is taking place apart from that the wound healing process also proceeds from the base towards the upwards so both the stages both the forms of healing is mostly seen in cases of primary the, the healing process is mostly beginning from the margins and it is proceeding in an inward direction whereas in cases of secondary healing it is bidirectional that is the wound healing phenomena is occurring from the margins and proceeding in an inward direction and that too it is also occurring from the base and extending in an upward direction moving on last but not the least so students these points have already summarized uh, already clarified that in the cases of primary healing the healing process is a rapid one whereas when talking of the secondary healing what we find the healing process is relatively slower so students this was a short discussion about the wound healing phenomena particularly the two forms of wound healing the primary healing and the secondary healing and in the upcoming videos i'll be talking in detail about the exact mechanism and the exact steps what are seen in the stages of primary and secondary healing so students if you do have any queries or comments or any topics what you want me to discuss don't forget to comment me in the comment section you are uh, welcome to ask such questions and if you do like this video give this video a thumbs up and thank you for watching and if you are visiting my channel for the first time and you haven't subscribed yet go and subscribe thank you for watching